Hey folks, welcome to the United Kingdom. It stopped raining for just long enough for me to get outside and shoot a video that I've been wanting to shoot for a while. So here we have a Pelum from Fabrica Cacti. Um, I'll put a link to their uh, page below. And um, this is fun. I've got two of these actually, and the other one's not being constructed yet, but I've constructed this one. So I thought I'd step out into the garden whilst it's not raining. <laughs> We're being deluged at the moment um, for a bit of throwing fun. I've got behind me over there, I've got an archery target currently at 15 yards away, um, but I'll show you at some different angles and different distances. Um, and really, this is a first time experiment with me. I have literally only thrown this earlier today. I had about five, five or 10 throws at that target uh, as an experiment before lunch, and now I'm filming after lunch. So this is the first day that I've thrown this. Uh, full disclosure, I did used to throw javelin when I was on the school athletics team when I was at school. Um, so uh, for many, many years ago now, more than yeah, like 25 years ago, I guess. Um, so I used to sh throw javelin on the athletics team. Um, this is a very different thing to an Olympic style javelin. It is heavier, it's balanced differently, and it is optimized for penetration, which we love on this channel, as you know, all know. It's opt optimized for penetration. It's not really optimized for range. Um, I think the Roman army, if they were going for range, they used different types of weapons, obviously bows, slings, and also they had plumbata and darts and things like that, and other forms of javelin as well. This type of pelum, obviously these come, well not obviously, but these do come in different weights. This, I believe, is a light or medium pelum, so it's not the heaviest type. There is a heavier type with a weight on it up here. Um, um, I think maybe sometimes it's a sort of ball of wood, sometimes maybe it's a ball of lead even possibly. Certainly the plumbata, plum gives us the word um, lead, um, uh, have lead in them. So th they're really about impact force rather than necessarily distance. Um, I've got some views about how these should be used. Um, I'm going to be specifically actually aiming to, as much as possible, use the scutum down here, which is also from uh, Fabrica Cacti, um, because of course I could throw this with a run up and throw it like an Olympic javelin, but what would that really demonstrate? It wouldn't demonstrate an awful lot. The fact is these were predominantly to be used with a scutum in the other hand, and I strongly believe uh, a lot of the time with minimum or no run up. Um, I also believe that they are not, if not quite point blank weapons, they are short range weapons to disrupt the enemy line and give you just enough time to wound um, and disrupt them before you pull out your gladius, your close, to, close combat hand weapon. I also have some theories that these may have been used in hand to hand combat sometimes and maybe not always just thrown away immediately. Uh, but that's for another video. Here we're going to be looking at throwing. So let's have a little look at uh, me experimenting for the first time throwing this thing. It's damn good fun. And uh, if you want to get any kind of um, spear or javelin, actually you don't need to spend money ne or very much money necessarily to get something to start practicing with. You can literally get a, a pole, a bamboo pole, for example, gardening pole. Even You can even get the kind of fiberglass or plastic ones. I put some kind of end on it. Um, it doesn't even need necessarily have an end and you can start practicing how to throw a spear or javelin. That's what I did and that's how I ended up on the school athletics team throwing javelin because I'd already taught myself being me. I'd already taught myself how to throw uh, a spear more or less. So um, I already knew how to make them stick in the ground <laughs> basically whereas most other people were throwing them sideways. As I say, I'm very rusty and out of practice so be kind to me. Um, I haven't thrown um, well, I, th I throw spears once in a blue moon, basically, um, but I haven't thrown them regularly for, for a couple of decades now. Um, so this is me experimenting with the Fabrica Cacti Pelum um, and Scutum at the same time, most of the time as well. And we'll have a little look um, at the effects on the, uh, well, how it, how it throws, how it flies, how easy it is to hit the target, though that's more down to human error most of the time, or, uh, or human success rather, rather than anything to do with the weapon. Um, and uh, we might also look a little bit more at some penetration um, because, you know, we like to see that here. Um, enjoy!
Let's look at some penetration. So this is a, a fairly new target and therefore fairly hard. Um, <clears throat> but whoa, trying to hold it up, you can see the penetration of the pelium through the butt. Now, if it can get through an archery butt that far, I think it's going to get through a lot of types of shield. Maybe not all, but you're certainly going to get a certain uh, amount of penetration through a shield because of the shape. You can see how hard this is to pull out. Uh, incidentally of the target but because of the shape of the pelum the long shin thin shaft once the head goes through the hull punches the hull the shaft behind oh, um, carries on penetrating for quite a bit and it's only the friction of this material that brings that thing to a stop the thinner this is obviously this is a big solid archery butt the thinner this would be like a shield board the less it's going to bind on that shaft and the further penetration We'll get coming through here that's a good maybe four or five inches of penetration straight through an archery butt admittedly at close range but there you go So it's about 15 steps or 15 yards. I'll give it a bit more welly this time. Just about. So um, here's experimental archaeology for you in action. <coughs> I've been very dubious about these shafts bending on pilum or pili, um, but since I've been practicing a little bit with this one, I have had some slight bends in the shaft, like then when it hits the target not square on and tilts and the force of the back of the shaft wants to carry on. And I've had some slight bends, this being iron, easy enough to straighten on my vise uh, with a hammer. Um, but here we have a somewhat notable bend. However, it's not a really drastic, drastic bend, as you can see. Okay, so I'm going to try and straighten this underfoot now and see if that works. Um, the weapon's still perfectly serviceable. It'll still do its job on the target. Let's see if I can just straighten this. So it's actually not that easy to straighten, as you can see I've straightened it a little bit but there's still a bit of a bend so I'm going to pop inside, straighten this with a hammer and then we'll have another go on the target. So a few fits, hits with the hammer later and it straightens uh, easily enough. Uh, this is iron, probably mild steel actually, um, but um, it straightens easily enough. I suppose the question then comes in, um, if that's bent to the degree that you just saw there, uh, does that render it incapable of being thrown back at the enemy? I would say no. You can still throw it back. It might not do as much damage, it might not be as lethal as previously, but I still wouldn't want that thrown at me with a slight bend in the shaft. So it's still a fairly substantial, sturdy 
um, iron shaft being thrown at you. Let's have a few, few more throws at this 15 yards distance. Just to note that I'm deliberately not taking any run up here because I consider most of the time that these pelum would have been used, pila would have been used, uh, would have probably been with no or very little forward motion because you'd be in a big unit and that wasn't necessarily possible. You might wonder why I keep carrying the shield, because it's good exercise. And also, you know, the pelum would be sh thrown most of the time, probably nearly all the time, with a shield in the left hand. Does it make throwing more difficult and inconvenient? Yes. Is it more tiring? Yes. Is it fun? Yes. <laughs> Some historically accurate Britannia rain now might need to stop soon. So just a little experiment. This is my first uh, proper session of throwing this. Um, what have I learned? It's fun. <laughs> It's fun to throw. You get a lot of penetration, whether it's in the ground or in the target, with this design of head. It's really, it's not designed for creating a massively wide wound, but it's uh, designed for creating either a deep wound in the body or potentially going through things, particularly shields, I think, in this era. Um, the pelum stood up really well. I've had a couple of small bends in the shaft, which were easy to take out. Um, and a uh, uh, couple of times in the ground it's hit stones and the points become a bit curled again it's I believe it's unhardened mild steel or iron so it's straightened fairly easily goes into and out of an archery target fairly well it's, as you see it's quite difficult to pull out to put my foot against the target um, but if you don't mind too much about the durability of your target <laughs> then maybe you can use a foam target instead or one of the cheaper straw targets um, but honestly, it's a bit like a bodkin point, a uh, giant bodkin. Um, so these are fun to throw. They're a lot easier to throw by themselves than when you're holding a scutum at the same time. Uh, but that being said, it's a lot of fun trying to keep, it's kind of a challenge keeping the scutum in front of you whilst throwing. Obviously throwing static or with minimum hip rotation, minimum uh, movement on the ground, no run up or anything like that like you would in Olympic javelin. Uh, it reduces the distance you can throw quite a bit. Um, that being said, for the purposes of this, I wasn't throwing as far as I could. As you can see, I was throwing to try and get onto the target, which is surprisingly hard at 15 yards, as you saw, although I need a lot more practice. I haven't thrown javelin, actually, for quite a while. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think it's a formidable close-range weapon. You could obviously throw it further. Someone who's a good javelin thrower could lob one of these, even while holding a scutum. I would imagine 30 yards with practice. Um, but to be honest, at 15 yards, it's probably going to be more devastating. So I suspect, and the Roman army experts out there might either corroborate or argue with me on this, I don't know. I suspect that these were retained until very relatively close range. Pretty much that kind of range, about 15 yards. So you get maximum effect on the target to disrupt them as they come in or as you go in. Um, and it gives you time to get your close quarters weapon, your gladius in other words, out of its um, scabbard. That's plenty enough time to reach down onto the right hand side actually and pull your gladius out. Um, any closer than that you might not have time to get your hand weapon out um, but equally any further away than that and your um, trajectory of the of the pelum is going to be like this and uh, less likely I think most of the time to do the kind of damage you want to the opposing force coming towards you. The flatter trajectory as we know from later periods of warfare with muskets and rifles 
the flatter trajectory you can get, which with this will be essentially close range up to 15 yards, the flatter trajectory, the more effective that weapon will be because if it misses the person you're aiming at, it will hit the person behind. Uh, equally, if you're aiming at the head or chest and you go a bit low, it will still get them in the groin. If your javelin is doing this, it's more likely to miss one person and miss everybody and just go straight into the ground. So it's better if your weapon can go through the line of people rather than doing this and potentially missing all the people. Um, anyway, I hope that's been interesting to watch. I will be doing a lot more, I think, in the future with the Pelum and, of course, the Scutum. Uh, cheers for watching and see you soon. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.